Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this week's Political Pulse. I'm Randy Aldridge, and I'm here as usual with Emma Kate Souter and Thomas Kenchelow. We were not here last week. They were on recess, but a lot's been going on. I'm going to start with you, Emma Kate. It's Senate Bill 20. What's the latest? Yeah, a lot's been going on with Senate Bill 20. Um, as of last week, Governor Cooper had vetoed the bill, and as of this Tuesday, that veto has been overridden by the House and the Senate. So That was, that was very quick. He vetoed on Saturday, yes. and on Tuesday, it had been overridden. Yes, so now the bill is law. Um, the changes don't go into effect immediately, though. They go into effect ju starting July 1st, and there's a couple other changes that will come into effect later on in the year, but July 1st is when that 12-week gestation rule will go into effect um, and start impacting abortions in North Carolina. And it's something we will continue to cover and see what happens next. Right. Yeah, the dust is definitely still settling on this. You know, it's it's been really busy and a lot's been changing very quickly. But we're still, you know, working to understand and concerned about the impact that this is going to have on our members and the patient-physician relationship. All right. Well, thanks for that quick update. I'm sure we'll be hearing more. Thomas, I want to go to you now. We're going to talk money. The Senate uh, released its version of the state budget. Uh, what really is in it that might impact our members? There's a few things in it that might impact our members. Uh, just a, a couple couple things to highlight. The uh, There's $10 million um, for rural health providers uh, that would allow them to be able to, to obtain startup, startup equipment for telehealth. Mm -hmm. um, with the Since the pandemic, telehealth has become a big issue, and this, this competitive grant will prioritize uh, primary care and OBGYN practices. There's also uh, $40 million um, for... Uh, for providers, uh, there it's loan repayment and incentives for providers uh, that will agree to go practice in rural and underserved areas. That's all, that's good news. It great a lot of rural counties here in North Carolina that are really looking forward to that. Um, it's still under negotiation, right? What what where are we with that? What's what's happening next? It is. So the the Senate has passed their version of the budget. Uh, the House is sent to pass theirs this week uh, on Thursday afternoon. Um, they they do they do look quite different, uh, and so they will need they will need to be conferenced. Which is uh, once the once both chambers have passed their their versions, members from both chambers will come together and try and and work out the differences and try and and, and produce one final product. And I don't want to ask you to look into a a, a a magic ball or anything here, but is there any time frame for this at all? Oh, I've heard I, I've we keep hearing that uh, the legislature is is hoping to be done by. Sometime around June thirtieth, uh, and so and it will likely be sometime before that. All right, so to be determined. To be determined. Right. And we need this budget to pass for Medicaid expansion as well. You know, it's very important yeah. that yeah. this happens as soon as possible. Right, right, yeah. It, uh, expansion is is contingent on passage of the budget, and and so it cannot go into effect until the budget is passed. All right. Well, thanks for clarifying that, both of you. And Kate, real quick, uh, your team has been putting together a report about where we are and what's happening in this session. Can you give us a peek into what that's going to look like? Mm -hmm. We've been tracking 175 bills so far this session, which is a lot. We've been doing a lot of heavy lifting. Um, we've had 10 white code days where members come and they meet with legislatures and um, 50 meetings with legislators with our members so far this session. Um, and we've also had 2,256 health care leaders involved in our advocacy throughout the year, whether that be responding to an action alert, showing up to our advocacy summit, what have you. Um, there's a lot more on the specifics of every single bill that we've been heavily involved in in this report. Um, and we're really excited to share that with our members so they can see kind of what we've been working on. And as usual, we can use our members' voices all the time for these advocacy items. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you both for talking about with this with me. I, I know we're going to be talking about these things a lot more going forward, but I appreciate you spending just a few minutes with me about all of this. And for all of you, you can find out more on our website, ncmedsoc.org, or on any of our social media channels. Thanks for joining us.